having a snorkel in Germany is actually like having a toolbox in a Toyota. Having a toolbox in a Toyota is completely unnecessary. <laughs> Using the crescent wrench as a hammer to put in your tent stakes in the ground does not count. Did you ever ask yourself if this is the way how to install the snorkel or if this is the way how to install the snorkel and what the difference is? And I thought we're going to cover that in this video. Hope you enjoy it. Before we go into the detail of this way or that way and what is better, based on my opinion and based in, on our application, I want to quickly cut into the benefits of a snorkel. Do you actually know the benefits of a snorkel? Yes. The air is cleaner and cooler. Those are two of the reasons why you would want to use a snorkel in Australia. And what's the third reason? It looks so good. No, no. What's the third reason in Australia? Oh, in Australia, maybe you can go water crossing. Exactly. Because I wouldn't want to go anywhere near crocodiles. Exactly. I sum it up just like where I said. You can potentially do water crossings if you fix all the other flaws in your car. You can potentially reduce the amount of dust getting into your intake and you can potentially reduce the temperature of the air getting into your intake. I have to rain on your parade already on that item with the cold air. I did my research on the internet in, in German precision, which is, you know, not as good as Japanese precision, but for sure better than Chinese precision. So the cold air intake scenario on a snorkel like this mounted to a Discovery 3 is definitely hoax. The air up here is not cooler than down here. There are certain vehicles where a snorkel does act like a cold air intake a little bit. If you have an under hood air intake where all the heat from the engine is and then you put on a cold air intake, it might actually increase your power output, especially on a naturally aspirated engine. But on a turbocharged engine like this one, where the air intake is already on a cool location like here, it will definitely not increase your power. There is no difference between here and here. And I know we're going to get a lot of comments that I'm wrong, but no, I'm not wrong. What it does, it increases the sound in a positive way and it lets you believe or feel that the power output of the engine is better. Ah, so the mall crawler needs a snorkel. Yes. And the first, what people think is, if you have it this way, is that you have it installed like a ram air intake, okay? This is called a ram air intake because it rams the air down into that snorkel. Oh. Ramming something in somewhere is usually not very good, okay? It might even hurt. The ram air facts, what you have here on a turbocharged diesel engine, is not gonna increase your power. It may not make your power worse, but it certainly does not increase it in a measurable way. 1% is not a measurable way. So even if that ram air intake works in a way where when you have a certain speed it ramps down your air here, it will mess up the mapping of your engine. Your engine is mapped to a certain design of your intake ducting. And if you change that significantly, the mapping of the engine will not match it anymore. So if you want to get more power out of your ram air intake method here, you would have to map your engine and your injection to that fact. If you do that, you could get, when you increase your speed, a higher output. So the ram air intake would anyway do only something positive at higher speeds on the interstate, on the autobahn, and so on. But when you go around in the bush with, you know, 25 miles an hour, there is no ram effect. And when you go around off-roading, speed is usually the thing you don't have. What could be the benefit going to this side then, okay? People say, well, this is wrong. And I say, this is very beneficial. Especially, I'm talking about our car, I'm talking about the Discovery 3 TDV6. Based on our measurements, having it turned around like this will significantly reduce the gas consumption, the diesel consumption. 
And the reason is very simple. Most of the time we do highway driving, okay? We drive in speeds above 50 kilometers an hour, maybe less than 150 kilometers an hour. That's our average travel speed. They are cruising speed gas consumption. It was fully loaded vehicle. I can't believe we drove what? How long did we drive with that snorkel facing forward? One year. I gotta calculate how much gas we burned <laughs> for nothing. And yeah, it's going downhill. I don't know, it's going straight. If we operate it like this, there is a ram effect, and this ram effect does not match the engine mapping and that will increase artificially the diesel consumption but it will not increase the power so we'll do the final check we fill it up and we see what the gas consumption is and christian was driving so uh. no complaining to me okay and we type this into the app yep you're making too much noise okay Snorkel forward, everything down here, snorkel backward, snorkel forward, snorkel backward. And here we've been driving pretty fast on the Autobahn. So it is a little more than a liter, liter and a half, I would say, yeah. for driving around like this for almost a year. <laughs> I'm blaming you for the high gas consumption. <laughs> Turning it back, immediately decreased it. I just didn't have the idea early enough. I was blaming Vera for the high diesel consumption. <laughs> and that is true. Yeah, because I was... got a lot of crap because of Yeah, <laughs> because that was the time where you got the car. Okay, yes. when I got my Discovery 4. You're quiet. Now, I took over the car. You know, we sold by Freelander. And I took over this car just about the same time we installed the snorkel. And Christian always complains that I use so much gas, you know, that it's my fault. But it's not my fault, it's your fault. Yeah, you put the, on the snorkel the I, wrong I way. I put the snorkel on backwards, I know. <laughs> oh my God. That is our particular main reason why the snorkel should not face forward. But there are other reasons why I think in our application and you know, you guys driving around in the bush being all pros and everything, you may have different reasons. But for us here in Germany, this is my primary reason. The second reason for us here in Germany, where you certainly will never need a snorkel. Having a snorkel in Germany is like a doomsday prepper in the US having an atomic shelter. Or having a snorkel in Germany is like somebody living in Siberia having a refrigerator. <laughs> okay. Having a snorkel in Germany is actually like having a toolbox in a Toyota. That's what we're going to keep. Having a toolbox in a Toyota is completely unnecessary. <laughs> Using the crescent wrench as a hammer to put in your tent stakes in the ground does not count. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's pretty senseless to have a snorkel in Germany and, and I know the German speaking 4x4 off-road Facebook group is going to have a lot of comments on this and they're going to go, oh, we use it every day through water crossings and we've been out in... Trust me, the closest you can get to a water crossing in Germany is in a flash flood. Oh my God. <laughs> Pop the hood. This is why we have a snorkel, okay? It just separates this vehicle from the regular mall crawler in Germany. But there is no technical reason to have a snorkel in Germany. Absolutely zero. It just looks cool and it was fun installing it if you check our video. <laughs> I remember. We're why am I not getting any power? The button. See, somebody pushed the button. It was you. No, it wasn't. The drill, like, <clears throat> oh my god. The instructions I'm using are not from this manufacturer. <gasps> oh my god. Maybe that's a bad idea. Yes. This is what an air filter looks like after one year of vehicle operation. <laughs> we do not need a snorkel over here. Why do you need a snorkel? The answer is we don't. It's for the looks. We can travel to Spain again and we'll see some dust. This drill is what Oakland County Chopper uses to build entire motorcycles. Christian, you didn't even highlight where the 14 is. Yeah, that's maybe what I should do. 
the one broke. I got this one in and I got this one in. And I'm gonna give up before I break a drill bit or something. We got three rivets in. Vera isn't around, so she she won't notice, okay? It's okay, I came in the right moment. Yeah, most people have only one in. Ah, can you get it? Christian, it's like when I'll do it and you do it. He was in a better angle. <laughs> it's nice if you stand there and hold it. I know. So what do you think? I put a little bolt in here so nobody uh, steals it. Hopefully you saw that we take four times longer than everybody else to do this on YouTube. <laughs> the secondary reason we have it facing backward now is the wind noise. We have fairly high travel speeds on the Autobahn. Our cruising speed on the Autobahn is 140 kilometers an hour. And when we turned this thing backwards like this, we realized that there is a lot less air noise developing in this corner. The third reason why facing it backwards is, in my opinion, beneficial is when we drive around slowly, let's say crawling around slowly in the Alps on dirt tracks. I don't want to say off-road, there is no off-road in the Alps, but if we crawl around on dirt tracks, then the intake noise from the engine sounds really, really cool like this when the window is open. Yeah, it hums. It hums. That was steep. Yeah, because you took the shortcut. Oh, I didn't you know? mean to. <laughs> Isn't that just so cool? And there's no one here. And it sounds cooler when it's facing this way. Definitely. And that was reason number three. Okay, I got a fourth reason why we want to have the snorkel facing backwards. And that reason may even be applicable to people in Australia. And that reason is the amount of water when you drive through heavy rain entering the snorkel. Okay, That water is a significant amount and it gets of course all the way into your intake box here. And the intake box includes a drain valve to let that water back out. Yeah. And on a discovery, that drain valve is typically broken. On mine it is. And it's also difficult to fix because it's not fixable as a spare part. So in real water crossing situations, we would have to fix this. Here in Germany, it doesn't really matter. I just left it open. But if I would want to fix this and I would want to close this, I would have to reduce the amount of water getting into the snorkel through the intake because I would have a only limited functioning drain valve inside the airbox. Turning this backwards will significantly reduce the amount of water getting in in a heavy rain. The least important reason for us, okay, because my drain valve is open anyhow. We are gonna open the K and N filter and look how much dust we have collected now, in when? almost a year. Yeah. And we did go to the Alps twice. So let's take the air filter out. So this is the clean side and it looks clean. Turn it around. Oh, <laughs> look at that. There is some dust. This is not considered dust, okay? If you would take an air filter out after a year in Australia, this thing would be full of sand. The, here is the content of the air filter box after one year. Down here is the drain valve and you can see this is um, a rubber membrane and I can push it open from the inside to the outside but if water would go up it would float up that membrane and it would lock but our membrane the rubber is completely gone there's nothing left. Yeah I'm not gonna go through water anyway. Cleaning a clean air filter. <laughs> I bought the cleaner before I looked if the air filter is dirty. This is not dirty on an Australian scale, okay? Oh, this okay. is like out of the box for them. <laughs> I'm sorry that you guys in Australia are always making up our scale. So we spray this on liberally. That's what it says. And then it says do not let the cleaner dry on your air filter. 
let it soak for 10 minutes and flush it out with cold water from the clean side out. Okay, I hope you know what to and do. Luckily, it was an English instruction, so I can repeat it so nicely. <laughs> yeah. It's my bad English. Oh yeah, we just got a nice comment that our English is so bad. Of course, a comment was written in German. Yeah, from a German guy. <laughs> We got to take an English class because our English is so bad. So we let this soak for 10 minutes and not letting the cleaner dry, just like the German and English instructions stay. In the meantime, we're going to check your oil, the 5W40 we put in last time. Oh, but I'm in an incline, parked in an incline. That's okay. Yeah. Actually, now it shows overfilled when you park uphill, but you can see where it is. It's right here. Yeah. Okay. And when you park downhill or straight, it will be just below this ball yeah. here. So the oil is good. Our new 5W40 save the engine oil. And you want to go on a long road trip to Switzerland. So what else do we need to do? So now the 10 minutes are over. So you flush the filter from the clean side out with a light flow of water. It yeah. takes the no dirt out to no dirt. Okay, a little bit stronger to be, right? <laughs> We're speeding up the natural drying a little bit. So the filter is now all clean and dry and the last step is to use this oil and spray the filter in a distance from three inches onto each of the grounds. Okay. okay. So I never done this before, but three inches. I would say like this. Okay, now it says let the oil wick in for 20 minutes, then touch up white areas and then install. Okay, <laughs> I hope you understood. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> so this oil is there to kind of bind up with the dust so the dust doesn't go through. And yeah. we fixed the brake light switch. I showed you how the Oh yeah, I know how to use a iCar Soft 930 yes. uh, tool now. Cool. So the brake light switch caused an HDC fault. On the Autobahn last time. What the hell? We have a suspension fault on the Autobahn. <laughs> I gotta wonder what this is. Oh this my. This sucks. It's my fault when we fixed your clutch, remember? Yeah. That's when I broke that switch. And get this pedal out so we can weld it. Yeah. Here. Oh, oh no. This piece fell just off. Which piece? Yeah, the spring fell you know off. How to put it back together? Yeah, it's there. You can see the crack. Here. Now I take the second one out. Oh my the god! Can you believe that broke? So check it out. But what about that side and that side? Uh, that's so water can get in and form corrosion. Oh no! You have to finish it. So, we know when we cleaned it. <laughs> Very nice. White dish areas. So we spray it one more time. And we call it good. Now we install it. Boah, it smells. We don't know how this would look now without a snorkel. But I would assume it does not look much worse. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because the air is just very clean in Germany and we are not driving enough dirt roads. Really, the snorkel is only to separate us from the mall crawlers. Yeah, and we're not going to collect any more bugs because we turned around the snorkels. What is really, really important on a Discovery 3 is that your intake system is free of leaks. And there are one, there is one critical position, which is where this pipe here connects to the downpipe down there. There is a, an O-ring or a rubber seal in here and if that slips apart you got basically a leak in your intake and that will also screw up the mapping of your mass airflow sensor and your car will significantly lose power as yes, you have to pump it this is a completely practical device here i hold it i hold it in position for you okay it's really multi-purpose you can use it on your snorkel and on your air intake there is certainly enough <laughs> smoke there and now, per Vera instructions, we put the air filter back in because it needs that gasket. And now we see how tight the air box but is. But it's still coming from underneath the box for sure. The point is, you can also use this idea to check if your snorkel is watertight. 
And with the amount of wading we do over here in Germany, I don't think we need to fix that. <laughs> you guys over in Australia and in the US and in South Africa and where you all drive, you might be able to use that technology. I would say this was a successful test of detecting that our snorkel is certainly not watertight. <laughs> I wonder, Christian, if we, when we mount the snorkel backwards, like Fabian has, if it makes a difference, at least with all the bugs inside. <laughs> We're just having lots of fun. And then you have to wipe off the excess oil on it. The lower pipe tends to slip down because it's not fastened very good in the plastic. Another thing what could happen is that your sensor is badly contaminated and you got to use sensor cleaner to clean it. Or you could have a leak right here. This front edge of the airbox lid needs to sit nicely over the edge of the lower airbox. And sometimes the workshops don't seat this correctly and then they just bolt it down and then you got a big open air gap here. Oh. Okay, I saw that when we got our Discovery 4, that was the case. Oh. Just like a normal person would check this, okay, <laughs> to make sure your shop didn't screw up when they changed your air filter. Yeah. You can't get that seal or that O-ring separately. No. My recommendation is that, just like we did, do a test with your RAM air intake facing forward, run it for a gas tank, Measure your gas consumption using a app, not using the installed display. Turn it backwards, do the same thing again, and get your own result. And I'm pretty sure if you have a turbocharged diesel engine, this will get you the better gas mileage. Or diesel mileage, I don't know if that's a term. By the way, um, I apologize to our Australian viewers that we mounted here the cheap Spanish layoff, the Bravo snorkel instead of the original Australian made safari snorkel. But the reason is this thing is only 180 euros and the original safari snorkel is 500 euros. That is just too much money for something what only separates you from the mall crawlers. <laughs> My mall crawler doesn't have a snorkel. My research says it doesn't affect the power output. That was enough. It was a long lecture. Yeah, again. Yeah. So that's all I have to say to this topic. And that's our video for this week. I hope there was something new for you, at least something you look forward to experiment yourself with. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos. We post one every Sunday. We thank our Patreons a lot for their support. They make these videos every week possible for us. If you are interested in our sticker or our patch, please send me an email. And I'll see you next Sunday. So Christian takes always care of my windshield. The truth is I'm only doing that because I'm driving the car once in a while. <laughs> so we're going to go on a hike. Yeah. I got my hiking boots on. No complaining. Damn. <laughs> Oh, and everything forbidden sign. So this is blocked, and then here is the trail. Oh, we at the ruin here, Burg Drachenfeld. So Dragon Rock sounds epic. Holy cow! So they used the structures of the rock to build. Their fortress here. So that was a six kilometer hike over here. So this is a rock 
and they carved it out to be a defense tower or an overlook tower. Quite cool. Well, I bet that's the next point we're gonna go. It's this rock over there. It's all carved into the rock. <laughs> that was a long climb. Another rock. That's where we've been and we had to go all the way down just to get all the way back up here. Ah. Oh. So we made it back to the parking lot. Jesus, what a hike. Here? And yeah. we went all the way. To there? Yeah. And then back here? Yeah. That was the last high point now and now down. Yeah. And now we're back at the parking spot. It took four hours. Mm -hmm. Here we are. So the best thing is now that our is tailgate. <laughs> that is the best thing. 